This is my chart of my recent follower gain on Instagram. Just take a guess about when I started uploading reels. It's pretty obvious. A couple weeks ago, I made a video on this channel about the directions of Instagram's new update and the algorithm. And I basically came to the conclusion that with the new update, which is still in the testing phase, but probably at some point it's gonna be permanent for everybody. The direction of Instagram is clearly going towards a video platform or a 9x16 photography platform. And my conclusion was basically either I give up on Instagram or I add up my content into this new format, which is Reels. Because posting photos in that format is kind of pointless. I mean, you can do it, but it's just, it already wasn't working for me. And, you know, long story short, I started experimenting with Reels. And what I wanted to do is come up with a way to make Reels that wasn't super time consuming or complicated. I hated the idea of doing Reels on my computer, on Premiere Pro, trying to figure out how to sync it to music and then export it and put it on Instagram. I just wanted to do it quickly and efficiently on my phone while I was taking a break from work, sitting at a cafe or just chilling and had an idea and quickly wanted to do something. And I've come up with a mobile only workflow to make really simple reels that also just work because the algorithm is pushing them at the moment. Like I said, for the past year, my Instagram was totally dead in terms of growth. As soon as I switched to reels, I saw it go up and my reels aren't even that good. Now, first of all, you don't wanna use the Instagram app to make reels. It's terribly glitchy. It constantly crashes, no matter if you use an Android or an iPhone. And even if you do manage to get through creating a reel without glitching, the quality will be bad. They just made a terrible app, probably because it's an old app, not designed for this kind of video editing, and it's just been slapped onto a mountain of code and it just doesn't work. You need a separate app that is designed from scratch to do this kind of more complicated video editing. And through some trial and error and asking friends, I found the best app for this purpose is CapCut. I've tried Adobe Premiere Rush before, and it's a decent app, but CapCut is just better because CapCut is an impressively good app. And the style of reels that we're making now is simply adapting our photography into reels by syncing music cuts to the beat. And the thing with Reels is that initially I usually get the same impression with Reels as my photography, you know, posts, normal photos. But with Reels, because the algorithm is pushing them, you just get traffic for weeks after you upload it. And with photography, it usually stops immediately and I get no growth. So that is the difference in the scale. Anyway, here is an example of the type of Reel that I've been making that has been working adequately well. It's not particularly sophisticated or complicated, just very simple synced cuts to the music. And by the way, I find the music that I want to use simply by looking at reels myself and then seeing which ones I like. The algorithm has gained a taste for what I like to look at, which is basically just kind of these sad music, depressing reels. <laughs> for some reason, they're kind of beautiful and not as lame as I initially expected reels to be. Turns out there's some actually kind of cool ones. I just never initially looked at them because I thought all of them were like, very beginner tutorials or, you know, the kind of Zoomer content that I'm too old for. So step one is ripping the music exactly. And you can do it with a any random website that will download the audio only from a reel or even the reel entirely itself. And then you can go to CapCut and use the function where you extract music from a video, which is genius app design because a lot of people are doing this. It's clearly been designed to do just this. It's designed for TikTok, but you can use it for Reels because Reels is TikTok. <laughs> it's just different, but the same. Okay, let me open my CapCut here. So you go and you import the music. Then in order to cut your pictures into the um, Reel, you just go and you click the sound, you go to match cut, auto generate, and then you get two different beats for keyframes for each cut. And then the app automatically knows how to cut these songs are so like it's sticky to those parts to those keyframes and then you just cut it you put your best pictures there to the most appropriately matching music and then you go exporting this is the final step that might screw up your reel if you export too high quality it's actually not gonna work because again instagram is kind of crap sometimes the color grade just gets totally messed up and the quality gets terrible so you have to preemptively ruin the quality of your reel in order to post it on Instagram so that Instagram doesn't ruin it. I recommend doing 180p 30fps, although in some rare occasions 
720p has been the best, who knows why. Also, you're gonna go to your settings and enable high quality uploads. It is a little bit hidden there in the settings here. And there you go, then you have it. Then when you go to Instagram, you wanna, instead of using your own audio, you just wanna pick the audio from the Instagram movie library, but because you already used the same audio, it's already gonna be automatically cut. It's a small difference maker, but I found that the algorithm works in a way when you go and you like or save a particular reel that you've been watching, the algorithm starts suggesting the same sound to you. So therefore, if you use a more viral sound, then all those people who already liked one reel of that sound are gonna see your reel more efficiently than if you were just using your own original sound. I mean, you can use your original sound. It's not a big deal, but it's just a potentially a slight boost if you do that. Now, of course, there's all kinds of different reels that you could make. You could be a little bit more original. But the reason I like this method is because it literally just takes, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. You can do it while on your phone, chilling, not really putting too much effort into it. And even though the user experience is pretty much the same as somebody looking at your photos and scrolling through them, now the algorithm actually likes and suggests the content and you can get a lot of followers. So, you know, if you want to get a lot of followers with minimum effort, if you want to have your cake and eat it too, this is a method that works reasonably well. I'm also experimenting with more complicated reels because now that I actually started using reels, I see that there's some filmmaking opportunities there that I can also benefit and learn from and have fun with. But then again, it seems like every time I try to make a complicated reels with many cuts, it doesn't even really do all that well. But when I do a very simple one, this one is my most popular reel at the moment. It keeps getting ridiculous amounts of views and it's literally just walking down a rainy alley with zero cuts with fitting music and it's repurposed footage from one of my YouTube videos, just taking the B-roll and posting it on the phone. The reason I don't play video games is because I just put the energy that it takes to figuring out video games into figuring out social media algorithms. <laughs> uh, I kind of enjoy it, In, even though everybody hates algorithms. It's part of the game of figuring them out that I like. And again, like I said in the last video, I have my YouTube channel where I can share my photography in a more serious way and I have my Twitter where I can share picture posts of my photos in a more serious way. So I don't mind using Instagram just as a marketing tool to outreach as many people as possible, especially because I've already invested into it. But at the same time, if you want to quit Instagram, I can see why. I mean, it's kind of, it's not, it's not really the same as it used to be anymore. But as an added bonus, you can go onto your Instagram and you just remove the reels from your picture page. So it doesn't even ruin your feed if you wanna have a nice classic feed of only nice pictures. You can just keep this reels separate. And surprisingly, I haven't even got that many unfollows for spamming reels. So, you know, literally just having my cake and eating it too with minimum effort. That's what I like to do. <laughs> Okay, a couple more things that I forgot to mention. I'm just recording this on my phone here because I don't have my studio set up. First of all, when I started doing this, I had 83,000 followers. That's going to help with the initial reach. If you don't have any followers, it's probably not going to be as effective immediately. But regardless, you're still abusing the algorithm with, you know, maximum capabilities of the moment. Just manage your expectations. You're probably not going to get 500 followers a day when you start from nothing. But the thing is, even though I had 83,000 followers, my account was basically dead when I was posting pictures. The reach of the reels is just like night and day. It basically rejuvenated my dead account. The thing is, when I would post pictures on this account, they would get about one to 2,000 likes initially, and then no more reach. But when I would post reels, the same thing happens. I get one to 2,000 likes initially, and then they keep getting views for sometimes a month afterwards. So all those extra views, when you go to my profile and check out my current reels are just basically free advertisements from Instagram because they are pushing the algorithm very heavily. And uh, another thing that I wanna mention is you don't necessarily, like you wanna be careful of not making reels that are too different from your usual content because if you bring in a lot of people who will see one type of reel and then they go to your profile and see an entirely different style of photography then the engagement is inevitably going to get pretty bad so avoid doing 
too much of a different thing there um, which is another reason why I like making these really simple reels with just your pictures synced to music it's basically the same almost the same experiences looking at your photos on the feed again we're just abusing the algorithm <laughs> I'm probably going to slowly start experimenting with putting stuff like initial video hooks into those. Now that I know I'm making reels, I can very easily just film stuff on my phone in the vertical aspect and start throwing little clips here and there and experimenting with things. So um, keep an eye on my Instagram account if you're interested in that and probably keep an eye on my YouTube because I'm probably going to add some more information here if I figure out some special methods or... Um, secrets. Anyway, that's all for now. Hopefully this was helpful.